Um, Stephen Kinnock is the Labour MP for Aberavon. Good morning. Good morning, Vaughan. Uh, well, what is going on? Because that language is unusual. We, you know, we went from doom and gloom a, a, a couple of weeks ago to the union saying, oh, well, maybe, maybe there's a chance here. It's very encouraging. And I think that it's because the unions for a long time now have been working on uh, an alternative plan, a, a counter-proposal, if you like, to the... Um, unnecessarily uh, short-term and, frankly, brutal uh, plan that Tata Steel had uh, initially been uh, briefing out. Uh, and that plan made it absolutely clear, the union's plan, that there was a route to decarbonisation that did, did not involve deindustrialization. crucially saying that whilst the electric arc furnace is being constructed, uh, the uh, heavy end of the uh, steelworks in Potolbert should absolutely continue to function. And, of course, alternatives to the long-term production of primary steelmaking uh, can be developed uh, in that intervening period. So the crucial discussion is around, do you shut down the heavy end before you start constructing the electric arc furnace, or do you do the two things at the same time? And I think what the trade union set out, and this is a plan that was backed by all of the steel unions, uh, was very clearly showing to uh, Tata Steel that their plan was both commercially sensible and viable, uh, and also much better in terms of ensuring that the steelworks can continue to retain its customer base and be ready to embrace the opportunities of the future. Um, you mentioned the, the um, creation of primary steel, and forgive me, I'm I ignorant on this, uh, but that can't be done by electric arc furnaces, can it? So if, if it's going to continue producing steel, as we learnt about it in school, you know, um, with studying the Industrial Revolution, steel coming from iron, coming from iron ore, uh, that can't be electric arc furnaces, can it? Well, uh, it gets a bit technical, but um, bear with me. So the, the electric arc furnace doesn't function only on scrap steel. It requires a percentage uh, of iron uh, to go into the mix uh, so that what you produce at the end of it is steel that can respond to all the different grades and varieties and qualities of steel that the Potolbert Steelworks needs to produce if it's going to protect its current order book and be ready to embrace the opportunities of the future. In order, as, as things stand, you can, uh, you, the iron that, that is a byproduct, the iron ore and iron that's a byproduct of blast furnace technology can be replaced by direct reduced iron. Uh, t uh, making and uh, that will require an investment in that capability but if you have a, a hybrid mixture of direct reduced iron and an electric arc furnace you can uh, do an awful lot of what we currently do um, so the crucial part of the union's plan is how do we keep the blast furnace working uh, so that we don't just chop ourselves off at the knees and start in having to import primary steel, millions of tonnes of coil from countries like India, which are far more polluting in the way that they produce their steel. Um, that would be utterly a ludicrous plan. Um, but whilst we also, whilst we produce, whilst we construct the electric arc furnace, we also have the capability, we build the capability for direct reduced iron, which does not have anything like the carbon footprint the blast furnace technology does. So it's a much cleaner way of producing producing the mixture of primary iron and iron ore and scrap steel, which is what we need to get to. Uh, well, let me uh, take you up on something I think you were hinting at there. You know, the, the goal of this is decarbonisation, but yes. re really that's just virtue signalling if all we're doing is shipping the production of primary steel offshore. <laughs> 100%. And that is why the Tata Steel plan that was briefed out a couple of weeks ago, which just left us all, frankly, shocked because we saw it as an act of industrial vandalism. Their plan also just doesn't add up from the point of view of decarbonisation, because if you're shipping all of your uh, coil, your, your primary steel in from a country where the carbon footprint for steel making is 40% higher than what it is in the UK – then you, all you're doing is offshoring uh, your carbon and, by the way, also offshoring all of your jobs. 
Uh, uh, so that that plan that Tata Steel briefed out simply was not acceptable. The unions have made it clear that it is not acceptable to them. And I'm very pleased that they have now tabled their alternative plan. And I'm even more pleased that it appears that the senior leadership of Tata Steel are, are looking very seriously at that plan. Um, when the announcement was made about, about the uh, government aid, we had... Um David T.C. Davis in here, the, the Welsh Secretary, and he, he sort of surprised me because I expected him to present what he was saying, you know, this half a billion pounds from the government is a good news story, and he said, no, it's a bad news story. You know, he was very honest about it. This is bad news, but we're trying to rescue something. What should the role of the UK government be now with that half a billion pounds, with that, with that aid? What should the UK government be saying to Tata? Well, it should have said from the start that you must continue to make primary steel in Port Holbert whilst the electric arc furnace is being constructed. And I'm fran frankly utterly shocked that there seems to be no strings attached to the um, £500 million of taxpayers' money that, um, that the UK government offered to Tata Steel. Uh, so that should have been condition number one. No cliff edge. The, the transition to decarbonisation has to be based on a bridge, not on a potentially lethal cliff edge for the steel industry. And the UK government should have made that clear from the start. What they should also have done is explored the long-term future for the, for the steel works, which is, OK, yes, we're going to have an electric arc furnace producing 3 million tonnes of steel per year. That's great, decarbonised, all good. But what does it, what is it going to need in addition so that it, it has the maximum versatility to be able to produce all the different qualities and grades of steel uh, that we need. And, and that is where direct reduced iron capability comes in. And that is something the British government should also have been negotiating with Tata Steel. But it appears they just gave them the 500 million with no questions asked. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, steel Company in Wales, British Steel Corporation, uh, Chorus, Tata, you know, the name's changed over the years, but Port Albert Steelworks, for anyone living in South Wales, it's something that's always been there. You know, we pass it, we smell it um, on, the, on the M4. Um, mm. Will it be there in 10 years' time, do you think? Yes, I passionately believe that it will be. Um, it will be a changed operation, uh, but we live in a, a rapidly moving world where things change. If you stand still, uh, you don't survive. And there isn't a single steel worker in Potolba that's burying their head in the sand and saying, we know that we, we, we think we can just ignore change and it will happen around us and won't affect us. Nobody believes that. But what we are very clear on is that this should be seen as an opportunity, not a threat. This is an opportunity to move to clean steel making in Port Holbert in a way that protects our current order book and enables us to embrace the opportunities of the future. And that's why we're, I mean, colleagues are also very um, uh, optimistic about Labour's £3 billion clean steel fund, which can help to provide the, exactly the kind of versatility and capability that the steelworks is going to need going forward into the future. It's got to be a partnership between government, uh, employers and trade unions. And on that basis, we can build a firm and competitive and profitable future for our Port Albert Steelworks. Stephen Kinnock, uh, thank you.